cameras on, then there's a good chance your face is going to be seen. Um, the benefit of it being recorded is that means afterwards you'll receive a link and you can share this recording with your colleagues if you so wish to. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, please put them in the chat um, and we will uh, address those in the relevant sections. Um, and there's going to be a poll at the end of the um, event as well, just asking if you like a conversation with anyone um, about anything that you hear here today. So um, hopefully you get some value out of the next hour or so. Um, just to kind of run through the agenda, uh, my name is Darren Spence. I'll, I'll go through some of the introductions in just a second um, so you understand who else is on the, the uh, webinar this morning. Um, then Microsoft, we've got a guest speaker from Microsoft who will talk about some of the business uh, examples and challenges at the moment that, that uh, we're all facing. Uh, we're going to talk through some use cases of some of the modern management technologies. Uh, I'll then talk around the, the Surface specifically and you know how the Surface and the Teams and Microsoft 365 combined proposition is giving customers a competitive edge um, and helping them uh, achieve more faster. Um, and then uh, we'll talk a bit about how, how Bytes and our partner core can, can really help you transform your environment, take advantage of many of the things that you'll be hearing today. And then just kind of call to action at the end if you are interested there's some workshops available as well but before i just introduce my the other um co-presenters i thought i'd just explain a bit about bytes so like i said my, my name is darren spence and i'm the business development director here at bytes for those that don't know bytes have been around since 1982 this is our 40th year um uh, we started off as a very small company in your village in surrey and we've grown and we are now listed on the uh FTSE. Um, and this year uh, we will have revenues of just over a billion pounds. So a very, a very large player in the in, in the uh, in, in the markets that we serve. Um, we're an IT services and solutions um, partner, heavily geared around Microsoft technologies, and we split our proposition into four key uh, value propositions. And one is around the modern workplace, which is very much the area that's being showcased today. One is around hybrid infrastructure. Uh, one is cyber security, we've got a very large cyber security practice and the other is around supply and optimization, whether that be um, software or hardware as well. So those kind of four areas is how we how we build value and, and, and help customers transform their, their environments. Um, joining me today, we've got Robert Epstein, who's the Windows Product Man um, Marketing Director at Microsoft. Like I said, I'll, I'll be handing off to him in just a second. Um, and we also have one of our um, core primary um, partners, uh, Core Technologies, so we've got Hannah Newman and Eamon McGann. Um, I'm sure when they when they take over the talking stick, they'll explain more about their, their roles, but we work very closely with Core. Um, they complement our proposition and yeah, help help you achieve what you want to uh, a lot more quickly. Um, so if you do have questions, please use the chat, but without further ado, I'm going to gonna hand off to Robert, who will really much you know, paint the picture from a Microsoft perspective. Oh, you're on mute, Robert. Can Sorry. No there we go. Like I said, un unusual for me having this kind of technology set up. But anyway, um, I'm going to spend about the next 20 minutes just talking about the importance of modernising compute and meeting the challenges uh, that, frankly, the pandemic has done in terms of changing the way that we need to look at technology um, and critically, therefore, deliver really excellent end user compute experiences. So uh, a little bit of sort of statement of the obvious here, but you know, as we've gone through the transitions of the last two years, it really has meant that we've transformed the whole way that hybrid work is done. Uh, now that we are coming back to offices, we kind of expect flexible to be the norm. Um, and it's really important, therefore, that we deliver each of our end users an incredible experience, no matter where they're working from. And we've got to keep all of that secure as well. Um, so this is about, you know, frankly, to, to Microsoft's mission, empowering the individual. And you can see a few of the statistics, you know, on screen now around not always do people feel that their IT is the best it could be. Uh, frankly, we need to really start thinking holistically about this. So whether in the office, ensuring that they have great Teams rooms experiences and if they're working from home, have they got the right peripheral set up to actually be that productive, effective worker wherever. But this idea of kind of, you know, IT being good enough really doesn't work anymore when the PC is the new office. 
So no matter where people are working, it really shouldn't feel remote. It's got to delight each and every user to give them this productive, collaborative, but yet ex secure experience. Um, and we've got to get past that point, you know, where they really need to just know and have confidence that their IT is going to work every time, that their boot times are quick, that their network connectivity and their VPN connectivity is seamless. It's not complex or difficult for them to work with. So that they're basically happy to keep coming back to this environment time in, time out. Now, of course, as we've gone through the pandemic, we also started to see technology being deployed to a lot more users than maybe we've had historically. And of course, the geography and the location of those users is changing quite dramatically as well. And actually, even over time, we've started to realize that the traditional knowledge worker is starting to diversify and people want different types of experiences, let alone within our usual sort of laptop mobile warrior environments of yesteryear, you know, where we would want different portfolios and different personas for your executives, for developers, um, you know, for graphic artists, everybody's going to need a different type of IT. But you can see here some of the variety that we're now starting to see. So you've still got those traditional knowledge workers, although a good number of those coming into the workplace now are just cloud natives. They've always worked from a cloud PC environment and they expect to almost be cloud first, even when they're using their PC. And what we've really seen through the pandemic is this idea of frontline workers, those first line workers who are out there all day, every day. Typically, they're the first uh, connection to your customers or they're the ones operating, you know, really running the company for you. So this can be the drivers uh, in travel industry. This can be, you know, retail assistants, warehouse operators. So really the frontline staff. And they're starting to use IT in a variety of different ways, you know, very often completely mobile first, phone driven. And yet we've still got to ensure that we can connect them to the processes, to the tools, to the collaboration tools to be an integral part of the company. When perhaps the colleagues who used to be sort of in the back office are no longer physically there, they're remotely you know, spread all across the country or even the world. And then, of course, we've started to see contractors, temporary workforces increase as well. And frankly, as I said, just people starting to outsource more because now that people are no longer needing to come into the office, we're starting to see people take on contractors in, you know, uh, in other locations, expanding the talent pool, um, you know, and therefore we need to be able to provision IT to them incredibly quickly, keep that secure wherever they're working from, and then potentially deprovision it quite quickly as well. And then from a technology point of view, there's a number of changes, you know, and this is to some extent this idea of modernization and how we move from the standard technologies that many of us have been using for sort of 20 plus years of Active Directory, typically building, you know, networks that we try and use firewalls to just build walls around and keep people out. And now we're starting to move to a much more flexible IT environment, a lot more BYOD, different form factors, a lot more SaaS applications, where therefore identity has to become the critical and first form of security. And we're working across all these different types of remote and uh, physical environments as well. And everything, as I said, just got to work where it needs to. So if you put all of that together in terms of the changes in the workforce, the changes that hybrid has brought about through the pandemic and the technology changes, Really, you know, organizations need to reflect on what does end user compute look like for tomorrow in order to keep people productive. So we've got to start developing those specific solutions that are specific to individuals roles. And then IT itself needs to go cloud first in order to deal with this level of complexity and the threats that we have. So at Microsoft, we have this idea of our kind of, you know, our, our North Star for what we believe end user compute should look like in this modern era. It's got to be adaptable so that anybody can use it no matter you know, what, and we can be responsive to the changes that are very likely to happen in the marketplace. We've really got to be deliver this excellence to keep people productive, to keep them collaborative and ensure they're getting a terrific user experience no matter where they're working from. But we've also got a challenge of how do we provision this from an IT perspective when our stretch on IT resource, limited IT resource is growing and growing as this digital transformation requires more and more of IT departments. So how do we give them simple single tools to manage all of this infrastructure, no matter what the device, no matter how and where that infrastructure and devices are being run? And then, of course, critically, how do we help IT keep all of that secure, updated, um, you know, and again, delivered through the cloud so it doesn't matter where people are working from. So this is just sort of a, a quick walkthrough specific to that IT example and sort of the transition and the journey that we see most companies start, starting to go through. So at the very bottom of this slide, it's very much around the technologies that have been around for a very long time that many, many organizations are still reliant on to build and run their infrastructure. Um, so they're using Active Directory. They're still doing imaging to get their machines out. So you bring a perfectly good machine in, open up the box, wipe a perfectly good operating system, put your company image down, and then that gives you challenges over 
time how you maintain and update that. So how do we move from on-premise technologies like Active Directory to Azure Active Directory to be our primary identity in the cloud and help us build all that security? How do we make sure that our data lives in the cloud with things like OnePoint? What one drive for business? And then actually, even when it comes to support, how do we start using the technology to improve the level of support we offer users? So how do we use telemetry and information that's already in the system and in the network to allow us to identify problems ahead of time and improve that experience proactively for users whilst giving them you know, more self-service tools, bots and remote help as well? You know, because they, they may not be able to walk into the traditional help desk environment to solve problems. And we've got to deliver great experiences for support remote as well. So I'm going to talk you through what we hope will deliver that North Star of like the amazing end user experiences. But we've worked with customers in, you know, recently and, and helped bring about that transformation. And this is some statistics and data that we've had back from users, from management, when you deliver that amazing experience. And the key thing really is the impact it can have that's often not realized on the individual everyday user. They really get this incredible experience. They get faster boot times. They get you know, fewer crashes. And that starts to translate into increases employee engagement, increases net satisfaction store scores. You know, so therefore, IT are suddenly being, to the hero, uh, being seen as the heroes. They're being seen as the enablers, you know, whilst everything is kept secure as well. And actually, when you bring about some of the modernization uh, and the automation that can be done with that, it actually lowers the demand on IT. So let's get into how we're going to deliver this. And I'm just going to talk through a range of technologies that really encompass end user compute. And then some of the colleagues from Bytes and Core are going to take you through a couple of those areas in a little bit more detail. So we talk about these five principles for modern EUC uh, based around the, you know, the, these elements of technology. So first of all, devices that meet the specific requirements of those role specific users. An operating system that delivers both a delightful and productive experience, but also one that's easy to maintain and, and to use. Management tools that are simple, that can manage all across all devices, form factors and operating systems, including managing BYOD or virtual devices. And then endpoint security that really keeps each and every one of those devices secure. While all of this is managed from you know, as few panes of glass as it were as possible, so as simple for IT as possible. And then I'm not going to spend time particularly on the collaborative apps. I'm sure everybody's familiar with those. It's to tools like Teams that now form almost the way that people do work and the way they inter interface with the organization. So just spending a little bit of time on each of these, let's think about the devices themselves. You know, and again, how much we're refreshing, how many devices have actually been refreshed through the pandemic where people have been working remotely for two years. So we have seen a big growth in the PC business and in, and in devices shipping. Uh, in a lot of cases, that's been to mobilize people who suddenly working from home and didn't have it. And so the question is, you know, do, we need, do we need to go and review the devices that people have had for a while and ensure they're still delivering great new form factors, touch, pen, uh, voice control, voice dictation, all those kind of technologies that allow people to work remotely, as well as improving the performance. Now, if we're challenged to get devices at scale to deploy them quickly, or more importantly, for some of those types of workers that I talked about that are maybe remote, literally spread across the world, or short-term workers, then virtual technologies and virtual devices is now easy to deploy. With the introduction of Windows 365 in particular, you can deploy from the same management tools instantly a cloud PC, almost a new form factor of PC, and enable that for users all across the world instantly, whilst keeping it within the same management framework of a company. And all of these devices can be managed using a single management tool, and we'll come on to that in a little bit. So from an operating perspective, obviously, most people are now running Windows 10. Recently released is Windows 11, and we're going to have some announcements later this year about the, you know, the next wave and improvements to Windows 11 that will coming through uh, calendar year 22. They start to really layer on improvements in security for the enterprise as well. So the beautiful thing about Windows 11 is it's very much built on Windows 10. Uh, it really is just that next evolution. It brings a wonderful new eye that users are going to love. It helps them get to their work and get things done quicker. It integrates with things like Teams better. So you have sort of single mute buttons. No matter where you are within the operating system, you can ensure you can interact with that on, on a nice, easy way, a yeah, nice, simple way. Um, it's also the most secure version of Windows ever. So, you know, whilst it's built on Windows 10 as a foundation, that will ensure that your apps are compatible and the management tools needed to run either 10 or 11 are the same. And therefore, we see, you know, to some extent, these living very much in harmony for a while as you start to make that transition. 
Now, one of the key things to understand here is this idea of a window servicing model. So this is shifting from what we've done in the past, which are these typical sort of three to five year lift and shifts where we refresh an entire platform and upgrade the operating system. We need to get into a cadence of almost annual updates as will be delivered by Windows 11. And the really critical thing here is to use the technology that's built into the system. So, you know, the telemetry that Windows provides, which can be made available through to you through the same management tools. And that gives you analytics to understand how compatible your hardware, your applications, your device drivers are. It will also give you insight into where crashes are occurring. Is there a particular device driver that's causing issues for your users, allowing you to either roll back or update that driver? And then to use the automation built into things like Endpoint Manager, these management tools to allow you to deploy both the monthly updates and the feature updates, the annual updates, much easier with you know, much less intervention from IT, giving you a much slicker experience for end users as well. So that transition to the servicing model is key. And as you think about the upgrade from Windows 10 to 11, that will be delivered in the same way using the same management tools. So the investments that you make in that now to move to a servicing model will benefit you for years to come and make a much, much easier update to Windows 11. And let's not forget, of course, the same tools can be used to manage those maybe frontline workers who are still going to continue to use mobile devices based around Android and iOS. So this is really the crux of it all, you know, getting the management tool right. And the beautiful thing here is when you think about modern management, this could all be controlled now from Microsoft Endpoint Manager. An Endpoint Manager is us bringing together, uh, you know, the config manager that many, many companies have been using for a long time uh, to manage their IT estate with Intune, which is the cloud first. And so we recognize there may well be a journey for people. And the first thing we would say is just cloud connect what you have already. You know, how do you cloud enable um, your config manager through Intune, and then slowly over time, you can transition to have more and more managed via Intune. And that's gonna give you that cloud first management that you need, uh, while still giving you all the benefits and familiarity of config manager as well. And this is what really enables that servicing model that I just talked through. It's how you're gonna get access to the data and the analytics from your telemetry, and how you build the automation to start making this a lot simpler process. Uh, it also allows you to do things like autopilot so that you can now have complete zero trust, uh, zero touch deployment of new devices. So as and when you get new starters to the organization or you need to do re replacement machines, you simply ship potentially straight to people's homes. As long as they can get on the network, you can then deploy. You can upgrade to enterprise edition. You can deploy security patches. You can enroll into networks, deploy VPNs and then all your applications without anybody having to touch the machine as well. So you get a slicker experience for the user and much lower uh, demands on IT as well. And again, as we've said, the same tools used to manage mobile. So you've really got a single pane of glass now that allows you to manage your entire estate. So when we go cloud first from a security perspective as well, then we start needing to think through identity first. And this is the idea of moving to a zero trust security model. Now, security all up is obviously an enormous topic, not something we've really got time to get into in depth today. But when you start thinking around how we deliver zero trust, the two enabling elements are AAD and Endpoint Manager. Now, most organizations have got some form of Active Directory, sorry, Azure Active Directory, because you're using it to uh, enable and to access your Microsoft 365 cloud services like Teams and Exchange Online. But many companies are still using things like ADFS to keep mirroring that or AD Connect to just mirror that to their on-prem AD. And here we're suggesting that the premise is to switch to cloud-based identity as your Active Directory first. And that's the enabler that then, you know, you start to shift towards Endpoint Manager, Intune and Cloud Management. And that unlocks this idea of zero trust security because it allows you to move and easily deploy things like multi-factor authentication. Again, to deploy and manage Defender for Endpoint it gives you that single pane of glass where you can start, you know, really using this across your entire estate. And of course, Defender for Endpoint now uh, is available on all platforms, so you can use that one tool, taking advantage of literally the trillions of signals coming into Microsoft's network that we can use, and we, we do incredible AI on that in order to proactively keep your organization secure. So, as I said, I'm not going to touch on the, collab the collaborative apps, but let's now just look at how all of what I've run through comes together to create this idea of a modern end user compute. Um, so I'm literally going to build back what we've seen over the last sort of 10 minutes or so and how that all fits together to create the, the, the picture. So when you think about modernizing the end user compute for your users, 
you know, your first port, the first thing to think about is the device and how they access, you know, what is their day-to-day -day user experience. So on the left here, this is the actual modern endpoint. So this is getting them a great modern PC from Surface or possibly from one of our OEM partners that gives them touch, pen, high performance, security capabilities built into the hardware. Now, if needed for those temporary workers where there's no point in maybe buying a brand new machine that they're only going to they're shipping it somewhere in the world, it's going to come back in potentially three or six months time that you've then got to reprovision. It may be an easier and quicker solution to simply deploy them a virtual machine using Windows 365, which can be deployed again and managed from Endpoint Manager. So it's the same tools deployed in much the same way. And as we talked about, any of these endpoints can then run any combination of Windows 10 or 11. So you can make that transition to the benefits of Windows 11 as and when you do. Now, the critical thing, having thought about the endpoint they're going to use, is then how do you uh, manage all of that? And really, this is the transition from what many companies are using at the top there, the legacy section uh, in sort of grey. And what we want to be delivering is this idea of cloud. So it's everything you see uh, in the blue box there. It's using Endpoint Manager as the critical tool and then helping us modernize the way we deploy applications, moving to Azure Active Directory for identity, which enables that zero trust model. And all of that enables us to run this Windows servicing model. And partners like Bytes and Core can deliver all of this for you and then deliver the services that are to help you, you know, literally run and get the best, uh, the best from all of that. So just as a refresh, really, if you think about what we've just walked through in the last 15 minutes or so, you can see how this starts to line up to those five elements of, you know, the, the five principles of modern EUC, the devices, the operating system, the management solutions, the security that that can enable. And then, of course, that provides the platform for running uh, Office 365 for teams and so forth. And so ultimately, you know, the, the key thing to uh, understand here is that all of this can be delivered basically through one device, something like Surface and a Microsoft 365 uh, license. So we really deliver everything in a single SKU that enables all of this. So you'll get Windows Enterprise Edition as your operating system, Endpoint Manager and Intune for the management solutions, Defender for Endpoint to manage the security, as well as the collaborative apps, Teams and, and, and the Office applications as well. So that one license is already a way in which we can start to simplify and reduce costs. You know, it's highly integrated. It saves all the, di the difficulties of integrating and managing multiple tools because you're using a single dashboard. You can keep the whole thing up to date through Endpoint Manager. You're reducing the number of vendors you have to work with and the number of licenses you have to buy. So there's probably cost savings in that as well. And then, of course, because everything's built in rather than bolted on and bolted on, you'll improve the user experience and you'll reduce the complexity and the likelihood for you know, crashes uh, and, and incompatibilities. So you really do re improve the reliability simply by moving to that single solution. All of which, of course, is cloud based. And then that delivers you the ability to take advantage of the analytics and the automation uh, to do that. And of course, all of this you know, as a Microsoft 365 solution is ably supported by our partners like Bytes and Core. Now, there are some studies out there. I'm not going to spend a great deal of time on this, but you can get quite deep into real world savings from the smallest organizations right through to the largest. You know, and this combination, the, the savings are, as I've touched on, things like simple, obvious licensing savings as well. Uh, there are productivity gains for the users. There are reduced risk because of the capabilities and security capabilities that we enable, which can go much further than sort of endpoint that we talked about now. But as I said, that's another topic in itself. So this is all based on some uh, Forrester work that Microsoft has had done. You can get deep into that with our partners and they can start to understand the savings that all of this can deliver you. So in summary, when you think about the five uh, elements or the five principles of modern user compute, that hopefully gives you a framework to now go back and think about how you deliver and work towards that North Star. So think about the devices you have today and are they providing that modern experience? Are they providing the performance that they need? And are they going to be ready to run Windows 11 when the time is right? Where you do have compatible operating systems, given that Windows 11 is built on 10 and we guarantee that your applications that run on 10 will run on 11 and we back that up with you know, free uh, support if needed to enable that, which is called the, um, the App Assure program, then there's no reason not to start upgrading those machines that will run it today. All of this is really easy if you're doing cloud-based management. So if you haven't yet, then start looking at moving to Intune, moving to Endpoint Manager to be that one pane of glass that's going to allow you to manage all of that. 
because I've said before, that's your route to Windows 11 and then to staying updated and secure in future. And then again, whilst it's a massive topic, start looking at the principle of zero trust and going identity first as the way that you're going to secure that entire environment. And then I'm sure you are already you know, using those collaborative apps, which of course will run on any platform. So where you go and think about what does a first line user work, you can deliver them Teams on a phone environment if need be, or a tablet or a Surface Go lightweight device, all the way through to you know, really powerful workstation level compute. Um, people are still able to run those same collaborative apps. So that's just about my 25 minutes. Thank you very much. I hope that's given you a good framework to think about uh, how you can go and deliver that North Star and really deliver excellence to empower every one of your users, no matter what type of user you have um, and how they're going to work in your organization in a hybrid world. And with that, I think I'm handing on. Great stuff. Thanks very much, Robert. That's tremendous. Um, just a reminder, um, if anyone has any questions for any of the presenters, if you put them in the chat, then we can address those as we go through the presentation. Um, thanks again. I'm going to hand straight off to Eamon from CORE. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, thanks Darren. Um, <clears throat> so good morning. My name is Eamon McGann. I'm the Solution Director at CORE. And my role really is working uh, with Bytes and our customers to fundamentally take the concepts that Robert's been talking about and help deploy those, manage those and secure desktop environments, primarily using Endpoint Manager. And I'm just going to pop my camera off because I've got a little bit of bandwidth issues, but so I'll pop that off. But I think one of the key things uh, that I want to try and do in the next 15, 20 minutes is give an overview of where most of Endpoint Manager, uh, and Robert did touch on that quite a bit in, in the last piece, where it fits, and probably more importantly, where it fits in a role of achieving modern end, end user compute, particularly in this hybrid world that we're now working in. Um, I'm also going to uh, talk about something called, if I can get my slide to move on, BMW. Um, uh, we're not offering a free car today, unfortunately, but we will be talking about the Bytes Managed Workspace, which is our desktop as, uh, as a service offering, which is fundamentally powered by Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, now, Hannah, who's coming up in a wee while, We'll, we'll, we'll give a little bit more details on, on where that fits. So I can, I'll leave the rest of BMW to Hannah, but I will uh, refer to BMW as, as we go through. I think one of the key things for me that kind of comes out of what Robert was talking about is uh, the trends that we're seeing and, and the last two years, how those trends have been accelerated. Um, and and for, for us, I think one of the key points is we are living in a world where traditional IT is extremely prevalent. Um, you know that there is a lot of effort and time going into creating builds, creating environments that work and perceivably work the way customers expect them to work. I think one of our key messages today is it isn't all about you know trying the, 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 the trying it all out and starting again. There is a transition, and ultimately we have the opportunity of classic IT and modern IT coming together so that we have a simple and obvious transition. And I think that's one of the things that I want to go a little bit deeper in, one of, in, in these topics that I want to try and illustrate. Uh, Endpoint managers, absolutely the heart of all of that. And again, Robert touched on that there are a number of technologies that come together really neatly to achieve a, a, a modern device management strategy. So configuration manager, Microsoft Intune, um, Windows 10, Windows 11, and, and some really nice advances have come out in Windows 11, even, even this month, uh, in terms of how we can manage uh, the, the, that the Windows 11 environment. We've got Autopilot, which is, is a sea change really for how we deploy devices, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. And, and then Azure AD, or having hybrid AD uh, to help manage and secure that in the cloud is a key part for us. Um, and that's really about achieving this zero trust. Uh, I, I like that phrase that Robert used. I hadn't heard that one before. Your, your device is the network now. Um, and, and I think it's really important when we're looking at managing and securing uh, hybrid end user compute that we get all those pieces working and working really well together. In terms of the, my section today, that I think what we try and do uh, here at uh, Bytes and Core is look at it from a lifecycle perspective. You know, if we look at how Endpoint Manager empowers the, the kind of three main stages of a device, uh, you know, it's it's supply and provisioning, getting it up and running. The key focus in the middle is is managing and securing that device, and then finally, how do we, re, you know, how we how do we recycle, retire, reuse that device uh, safely and securely? So we're going to step through each of the, each of those, um, and we're going to start fundamentally with the supply of the device. Um, again, Robert touched on some of the kind of concepts and technologies in here, but there are three kind of key things that we fundamentally see. 
uh, as part of the de device management life cycle and the supply cycle. First and foremost, we've autopilot. Um, Core and Bytes uh, were actually one of the first here in the UK to use the autopilot service. And this really is about provisioning new devices uh, and recycling devices. Uh, uh, working with a customer recently, you know, we have a very simple principle using technologies like autopilot. If a device is corrupt, if a device isn't working, why waste hours trying to fix it? Send it back through the autopilot process, it will repair itself and we've saved IT time, we saved the user time, we've got the user operational. So some really cool tools that are built into this concept that are very, very modern and a new way of looking at how we provision and manage the device. Secondly, Intune, uh, in terms of cloud management, really is the heart of everything we do. Uh, we use it to deploy apps, deploy policies, and it's the overall management of the device, but we can co-manage and we'll come back to that in a second. And finally, for the BMW service, the Bytes Managed Workspace service, security probably is one of the very key things that we look at. Um, so, uh, you know, using technologies like Microsoft Defender, and for us, uh, our recommendation level is uh, M365 E3, the E3 license set, which will give us both Defender uh, for Endpoint Plan 1 and Azure Active Directory Plan 1. And that really has a whole set of combinations of technologies which are about making sure that fundamentally we've protected the device and protected the user. And that's part of our base build. Uh, again, there's more detail we can go into, but for today, just that's kind of the pitch that we want to keep it at. It is about making sure the device is as, as secure as it possibly can be. The life cycle of a device going through its supply phase, you know, has a number of elements to it. Um, and again, there's a lot of detail, so we'll keep it at a high level for today. But fundamentally, the administrational team, be it the BMW admin or in-house admin, really is, is involved in running this full end-to-end -end, uh, joiners, movers, levers process. And autopilot is configured, hashes are, are exchanged with distributors, and, and ultimately the device is provisioned, enrolled into AD and Intune, and is then ready for full deployment, whatever way you manage to configure that. A, a quite unique element of the BMW service and the service that core run with Bytes is something we refer to as our smart setup package. And ultimately, this is an enhanced setup of the autopilot process. Um, so we've enhanced how the sequencing of applications, it covers things like BitLocker, start menu updates. And I think Robert touched on it really early, really importantly early around the end user experience. When a device arrives in the, in the front door, if somebody's now working from home, um, turning it on, getting operational as quick as possible, as sensibly as possible, is really what our smart package is about. Um, and, and ultimately, provisioning uh, and, and taking that through that final piece, which is how do we supply to the user? Um, now, we do this in a number of formats. We have a provisioning portal where you can provision the device directly on the portal um, and it gets shipped directly and then goes through the full autopilot process. Um, we also have other options like white glove pre-provisioning services, but ultimately it's your choice what experience you want the end user to have. And I think the final part of the JML process actually is more fundamentally around how secure is the device? Have, have we set up the user properly? Have they got the right permissions, the right profile? And are they using the right licensing? So cost management and efficiency around licensing is a key part of the service. Um, all of that, by the way, aligns to what the build type um, you know, needs to be and how secure the build needs to be. Again, uh, referring to Robert's section, we don't want to throw away a good build, but what we want to do is harden the build that we get from the OEM, from the supplier. So making sure we have NCSC, CIS, Cyber Essentials, whatever that alignment is, our profiles and our policies are deployed onto the device to ensure they comply with those standards. The second part really is that I want to cover is some of the key focuses that Endpoint Manager allows us to do in terms of managing and securing devices. Now, there are a huge number of areas I could cover, so I'm just really going to focus in on two for today. First is unified management, and the second is built-in protection, the security. Um, and even within a, a, a unified management, there are four areas that I just want to briefly uh, run through and give, give a general overview for. So first and foremost, uh, and this is something that Robert touched on, and for me, this is the heart of the success of modern management. And this is about extending the benefit uh, and maintaining a, a plan to get to full cloud management, full modern management. Um, and there are a number of stages to achieving that and a number of strategies to achieving that. First and foremost, and the one that we highly recommend almost straight out of the box, and one that actually doesn't happen as often as maybe it could, is, is the tenant attached approach. This is where really we are connecting our on-premise uh, configuration manager to uh, the cloud. And this really gives uh, customers the best of both worlds. So no, you don't necessarily need to join your Windows clients into Intune into the cloud, 
but you can get the benefit of having a single Microsoft Endpoint Manager portal. So you get a whole host of things like remote actions and analytics that are driven through cloud management that you don't have in SSEM. So you get some of that initial benefit, but you also get a single central point to start managing devices. So at step one, it's a no-brainer type step, and it's one thing we, we highly recommend. The second step really is when organizations are ready to move to having a joint management approach or a co-management approach. This is really where we're, we're connecting the, the on-premise configuration manager S, uh, system center to uh, the cloud. And we also have, uh, sorry, the, the device is both connected to Intune in the cloud and is connected to uh, system center locally. And that allows you to cherry pick which services you run from which tool. So you could have software deployment being being delivered by system center, but patching and, and metering being done by Intune. So you can cherry pick and, and decide what's best for you. And ultimately that's the stage gate into the final stage, which is cloud native com configuration. As an absolute minimum, what we recommend is that new use cases, so situations where new devices, new new applications, new user types, that they're all automatically started as cloud native, uh, cloud cloud only type of devices, because that lets you test that experience end to end. Um, and we're doing that with a lot of our customers right now. So we have a mixture of devices that are purely cloud native and the rest are in some form of co-managed hybrid world. But you've a lot of you've a lot of, of 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 opportunity to move towards that over time, test it, make sure you're happy with it. If we look at some of the other benefits uh, of cloud management, uh, one of the kind of standout things, uh, you know, we talked about zero touch autopilot earlier and how that streamlines the deployment of the device. But if I hear time and time again, one of the challenges uh, that we hear from customers is how do you keep devices updated seamlessly? And there are a lot of updates that happen out there. You know, if you look at the average cycle for, you know, the average cycle of, of both feature and quality updates, you, you can have multiple updates per month. Uh, and it is important that IT stay on top of that. They're there for a reason. Um, so we need a, a sensible patching strategy. This is where uh, cloud management and, and management through Intune really is an extremely seamless process and part, fundamentally part of our service. So if we have a, a quick example of what, how Endpoint Manager presents this, uh, here, here have an example of uh, Windows Windows 10 deployment rings. Uh, this is configured for a number of different uh, updates that were allowed to happen. If I look at one of the updates, you'll see in here that um, this has given me some really good analytics in terms of devices that have been updated, those that haven't. So I get a real good snapshot. Um, it's not unusual for us to have conversations where customers are saying, we've deployed a patching solution, but we're not that clear about how well patched we actually are. So. We feel we're covered, but we're not quite sure. So again, we've got to get some more certainty to that that whole experience. And here, just as a quick example, I'm looking at the fundamental settings on one of the, the patching policies that we have here. So we can see that it's a semi-annual uh, policy. It, it allows us to do things from a user experience point of view, it allows us to pause the updates. We can set grace periods. All of these things are granular that IT set, and then the user has the best possible experience that we, that we can achieve. Um, security, passwords, all of those things came up a little bit earlier, and, and we think that this is one of the more fundamental elements of unified management, is how do we improve that experience? And there's a whole host of technology in here. There is a passwordless, Windows Hello, all of those technologies, and, and ironically, looking at my kids when they were homeschooling, um, the year before, in the first stages of the pandemic, watching them using devices with, with Windows Hello and, and passwordless just shows that that generation is ready for this type of technology. So there's some cool stuff we have in there, but actually we got step back a bit. One of the more fundamental things we're trying to recommend is the technology within your licensing will allow you to turn things up like self-service password reset. And that really just helps reduce frustration Create an environment where users are more fundamentally independent. You know, people are now logging in at 10 o'clock at night based on their own work patterns. Um, and having a password issue at 10 o'clock at night when IT may not be available, it, you, we just need to be able to work around that. The other thing we, we recommend is the use of devolved IT. This is a service that we see that's quite underused, but is a really nice to have if you have frontline workers, you've got distributed workforce, the ability to use uh, solutions like the My Staff service. Um, and pass that uh, out to frontline managers who understand their team more than you know, in central IT might. Um, and this is a simple example of maybe a local business admin performing user admin for a user called Morgan Connor. So these are really nice, simple tools to improve the management experience and the security posture really at the same time. 
uh, came up quite a bit this morning around virtual uh, around Windows Windows uh, 365 and some of the Windows 11 uh, enhancers that are coming. But fundamentally, when we're managing devices, you know, we will have a situation where we're managing both physical and virtual. And, and our BMW service from the get go has always been around supporting both. Um, in relation to virtual uh, vir virtual desktops, we've always supported ABD uh, and as an extension of both Azure management and, and Microsoft Endpoint management. Um, and that's been really important in the last you know, 18 months or so, where there's been a, a real big rush to improve the remote working experience in any possible way we can. I think the really good news, and um, again, we've mentioned once or twice this morning though, is, is the advent of what effectively last July was a new version of, of, of Cloud PC in Windows 365. Um, so we now effectively have between both the physical and the virtual, we kind of this new layer, the cloud PC, which is Windows 365. Um, we've seen huge interest in the kind of use cases that it 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 provides, um, and I think a lot. It's a huge topic in its own right, but there are a lot of decision points around where Azure Virtual Desktop and Windows 365 sit. Um, there's no reason why working with a customer even just yesterday, they're using both for different use cases. It's it's a, it's a large conversation. There's a lot of benefit in there. It relates to cost, to scale, um, but fundamentally, uh, the real key benefit of Windows 365 is we now can integrate the management of, of the Enterprise Edition in Endpoint Manager. So our management uh, posture becomes easier and easier and easier. Um, so it's a huge topic. It's one I'm particularly interested in because of how versatile it is, but it's one that we'll take to, to, to a, a separate discussion. Um, but the, the second part of, of Endpoint Management is the security that we can achieve through Endpoint Management. And first and foremost, uh, conditional access was mentioned a wee bit earlier as well. Um, Endpoint Manager, together with Microsoft Condition Access, uh, depending on which version of licensing you have, is really the powerhouse of creating this zero trust, this never trust, always verify environment. Um, but, you know, zero trust requires policies. It requires intelligence. You know, how should we apply trust? You know, we don't want to create an environment where users are constantly being re-asked to put in passwords, constantly asked to verify who they are. We need to have a, a, a sensible balance between um, security and, and productivity um, and condition access, which is a you know a monstrous tool and, and something that really gives us a huge amount of capability and is policy driven so we can work out who the user is, where they're coming from, is their device compliant, um, you know, is, is their login compromised. All of those things can be used as signals to decide what we want to do on a case by case, application by application basis. So again, a huge topic. I'm, I'm going to move on, but it's a topic then in its own right. Um, I think if you haven't looked at multi-factor authentication or looking at how you can do it sensibly, the combination of multi-factor and um, condition access are, are really a key important part of the service. And it's one of the first configurations we do as part of the BMW service to configure that element of security. Um, I touched on it in the last in that last piece, but device compliance is also quite a fundamental element that I think Endpoint Manager and Condition Access give us. Um, and, and at its simplest, if I give an example, here we can see uh, a snapshot of, of, of our devices. And, and it, more, more importantly, we see a set of devices that appear that they are, aren't the most compliant. Um, that allows us to be uh, intelligent about what we do with that device. We may, we may decide to let the device into the environment, but restrict on certain applications. Again, there's a huge level of granularity, but fundamentally, Microsoft Endpoint Manager and Intune coming together are giving us a health status of that device and, and, and help us decide what we do with that device. Um, so again, some key, key, some key capabilities. Uh, Endpoint Manager, and particularly Defender for Endpoint, um, really is a, a pivotal part of the service as far as we're concerned. Um, and that's really where we start to deploy and configure from the get-go some of the extended features. And, and, and I, I have to highlight at this point that quite often we see when we look at uh, device security and endpoint security that the base antivirus capabilities of products like Defender are turned on, but not much else. And, and that's a real kind of open goal. There is so much capability, attack surface reduction, protection from ransomware, uh, IP filtering, all of this capability is pretty much built into the vast majority of our customers licensing. So we, by default, turn that on as, as part of the as part of the of the uh, BMW build, we create things like security ba security baselines. Uh, again, not another day session, but huge capability built into the base product and something that we we we, we would uh, d deliver from the get go. 
Uh, the final section, and I think this is a section that Robert touched on earlier as well, we have a basic principle that if the, if the end user is ringing us saying they've got a problem on the device, we always feel we're a wee bit behind the curve. There is so much technology built into Endpoint Manager that allows us to do intelligent remediation, intelligent scripts to get us to the point where we proactively fix the problem before it even occurs. Um, and also we're optimising the whole experience of boot times, all those kind of key things which can frustrate users really, really heavily. So that's kind of one of the fundamental parts of the service. I'm going to conclude with one or two slides on the end of the end of life. And end of life really is around a sensible room, uh, a, a way of managing that process. So the ability to revoke access to the device, even personal devices where we can wipe corporate data off a personal uh, iPhone though, uh, or mobile device in general. They're the kind of key things we can do. Auditing, keeping track of devices. Uh, you know, where are the devices? How many devices have I got? Who's got them? Um, being able to retire, reuse devices, and then finally, the really important part is that fourth bullet point: How actually can we do that remotely? The age of, of, of a user having to bring a device back into the into a central office to get stuff done is no more. We need to be able to do that remotely. Um, and my final piece today really is. Uh, and Robert touched on it early in, in, in his one of his last lines. His endpoint analytics is the jewel in the crown as far as we're concerned. You know, with a lot of technology, a lot of capability, but actually there's so much technology built into the product to tell us what's actually going on with the device. So if we take a really quick example of some of the reports that it produces, we look at endpoint analytics. You know, here we have a really nice snapshot uh, of uh, the health of our devices. Uh, if I go into things like startup performance, we start to see the boot scores. And this is only about telling us what's happening. It's also helping us derive corrective actions to fix. Um, and here, they, here we have proactive remediation. So these are scripts we build to monitor our environment, uh, review our environment, and remediate our environment to ultimately give us that posture of uh, self, you know, uh, stable, performant, and, and secure environments. Um, so a lot packed in there. Microsoft Endpoint Manager is a, is a monster tool, and BMW really uh, is the service we use to drive Endpoint Manager and, and, and modern management. With that, I, I think uh, I'm going to hand over to Darren, who's going to take us through Surface and how all of that comes together. So thanks, Darren. Many thanks. Uh, cheers, Simon. Um, I'm conscious we're kind of 40 or 45 minutes through. Again, what if if anyone has any questions, then please uh, please send them over. Um, so we've heard quite a lot about the, I guess, the way the world is changing and, and the way of work is changing, and some of the great tools that we've that we've seen so far. So I thought I'd just take a few moments just to talk specifically around around the surface and how that is helping organisations achieve some of their ambitions. Um, what's interesting that some of you may or may not know is that when Microsoft uh, really went into the surface market. They they sat their engineers, their software engineers with their hardware engineers. Um, so it's the first time when they built Windows 10 and now Windows 11, the hardware has been built very much uh, as, as a best in class platform to run the Windows or the modern Windows um, operating systems. So it's the only OEM clearly that, that, that has access to the Microsoft software engineers. And that, that gives Microsoft an advantage and also gives, gives customers a, a competitive edge. What's also interesting is that if you look at our client hardware business, uh, our surface sales uh, have now exceeded all other vendors that we stock. Um, so surface is definitely our primary product now. We do still sell HP and Lenovo and, 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 and Dell, but Microsoft yeah, has, has certainly seen a surge in, 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 in popularity. So I thought I'd take a few moments to really explain, I guess, the reasons for that, and hopefully you'll take something from that. So there's, there's, there's three you know, core reasons why um, customers are, are choosing the surface over other manufacturers. Um, one is around its usability. The way the technology is built has been built to be very versatile um, and used to adapt to the way people typically like to work, whether it's with, with notepads or with tablets or, or, or laptops. And they've specifically built devices um, around you know, uh, specific use cases. So that, that usability is, is absolutely key. Um, and they do this by having dedicated teams who spend their time really looking at how humans work um, and how we like to interact with the devices that we use to get work done. Um, I have a number of slides that I can share with you if you're interested on each of these subjects. So if, if you'd like to go deep on any of these particular areas, then please let me know. The second is around sustainability. Microsoft have a very strong story to tell around sustainability. 
Uh, they have been recycling for, for a long time and uh, they've been carbon negative uh, for 10 years now. But they've got some quite ambitious goals that by 2030, uh, they really want to be you know, even further ahead than they are now. So if sustainability is high on your agenda, or you pitch for government contracts of any type, um, then, then, then please do look at the, uh, the surface credentials around that. And we've just got this one slide that customers typically ask us for. It's a bit of a, sort of a checklist, really. You know, if, if sustainability is key on your list, uh, there's kind of six areas that typically customers like to benchmark their vendors against. Um, and you can see them listed here. So once again, we do have slides that support each of these areas. But the story really, you know, the, the, the key message is, is that the surface as a whole um, has got an incredibly good and uh, advantageous story around sustainability. Uh, the third is actually around the devices themselves and how they're built and powered. Um, you may or may not know, but Microsoft only operate in the business space. So whilst you can buy these devices uh, on the high street, PC world, that kind of thing, the, the, what, what's inside the box is very much geared towards the business worker. Okay, so uh, and, and the package that you get out of the box really is geared kind of around the business worker. So one of those things is the advantage exchange. Um, uh, which allows companies to essentially get access to a new device if there's breaks before sending back the original. So there's some, some things like that built into the overall Microsoft proposition that really helps businesses stay ahead and, and ensure their, their employees keep working. Um, and certainly if you look at the product satisfaction levels, these are, you know, again, once again, kind of leading edge compared to other manufacturers in every, in every case that they've surveyed. You know, Microsoft comes out top as far as referenceability and likability, and particularly as we're now looking to attract top talent into our businesses, having access to the greatest technology, the latest technology, um, certainly will help you um, stand above uh, many of your competitors. So it, it will help you on the talent acquisition um, journey and also will help you retain top talent for longer. Um, so as far as the actual range themselves, I've got one slide on this. For those that haven't really taken the time to uh, have a look at the range, uh, Microsoft have a number of kind of key products. So the first three that you see at the front there, the Go, the Pro and the Pro X, I guess are the kind of the classic Surface uh, as it was launched 10 years ago, really. So these are tablets with detachable keyboards, the plastic keyboards, um, each of which has a slightly different specification and, and, and power configuration. Um, at the end there, the Duo, uh, this is a, a, a dual screen uh, phone uh, which runs uh, the same operating system. So the great thing about this device, it can be managed exactly the same as your tablets or, or laptops. Um, so if you do have a lot of field workers or people that typically have two devices, then the Duo is definitely worth looking at. It's incredibly thin and gives uh, field workers the opportunity to uh, do a lot more things at once from a single device. Um, the middle row, you've got the Laptop Go and the Laptop. So these are laptops with fixed screens. Um, so they're much harder keyboards, harder wearing, um, and again, towards typically office workers that need to take their devices to and from the home and the office. Uh, the, the book um, is a very powerful device which combines the, the capability of the laptop with the versatility of the tablet. So you, that screen detaches fully and also folds right back on itself. So um, a very powerful device that, that is robust as well. The studio, I guess you could liken to almost like a desktop. Um, the screen folds down to 45 degrees. Um, so uh, the great thing about that, of course, is that if you have people in your marketing teams or design studios, uh, they can typically um, use the, the screen in the same way that they would use um, their, their workstation at the moment. Uh, and the hub is a device that sits on the wall and, and also can be moved from, from room to room. So all very different use cases. And what we're finding is organizations essentially are asking us to help them uh, look at the personas of their employees and then see how we can recommend each different set of devices. And within each one, there is a different, config different configuration designed to meet every budget. Um, we, we talked about teams earlier, or, or Robert did. I've got one slide on teams. I guess the takeaway from this slide uh, really is that, you know, the, the surface has been built to get the best out of uh, virtual meetings and that team's collaboration. Uh, they do this by the use of enriched cameras, um, top of the range microphones, uh, just to make sure that people can actually be, be seen and heard accordingly. 
Um, we do have some demo devices available if anyone wants to have a uh, play around and put these um, devices to the test. So if any of what you've seen so far is of interest, um, then please do drop us a line and we can arrange to have some, some uh, trial devices and demo devices sent out to you. Um, I've just got one more slide before I hand over to Hannah, which is really talking about how we're helping organisations get access to these devices um, cost effectively and cash effectively, and also how we can help you ship those devices so they're ready to be up and running within you know 15 minutes or half an hour. So we call our, our device as a service, um, our Bytes Managed Workspace. Um, so our job is to take away the headache of building profiles for you and provisioning those devices. We do that for you, um, and then we can send those devices to site and manage them through the life cycle. Um, just starting on the commercials before I talk about some of the service offerings. So, you know, cash purchases have been around for a long time, but what we're finding, particularly since COVID, um, there's been an explosion in the number of organisations now that are looking at alternative means of finance. So operating leases are now our most popular way, uh, or our, our customers' most popular uh, means to get access to the technology. So typically when you do a return on investment calculation uh, and return on cash, um, you can get access to a device typically for less cash than if you're going to pay up front. So we do um, some quite clever um, modelling around a thing called residual value based operating leases, where we consider the, the value of the device at the end of the lease, typically three years. Uh, and if it's typically 15 percent, we knock that value off of the cost of the device up front and then we lease and then we apply finance charge. So when you look at how much you pay back over three years, it's less than if you're going to pay for the device up front. We also have a carbon net zero operating lease as well. So again, if it's part of your sustainability journey, if you're looking to, to um, explore as many different avenues as possible to reduce your carbon footprint and boost your sustainability credentials, um, then anything that goes into these um, specially designed operating leases um, uh, can be carbon net zero as well. So, you know, our, our job is to look at your ultimately how you'd like to pay for these devices and come up with some options for you. We also have the ability to, for you to send back devices after a year with no cost. So you know, if you're in a situation where you, you may or may not need devices more than a year or you're unsure, then we have a separate financial product that gives you flexibility to do that. So um, yeah, work, work with us. Uh, if you share with us your, your objectives, then we can come up with um, various different ways for you to pay for those devices. Uh, regard to the services that we provide, I'm just going to talk about a couple and then uh, Hannah can talk about the rest. So I'm going to talk about the ones on the left hand side, the pre-provisioning and the deprovisioning. So we've talked about some of the stuff already, but essentially we can help you set up those devices before they get shipped to your end users use, using systems like Autopilot. Uh, we can also asset tag those devices for you as well um, and manage your asset register if that's something that you'd like us to do. So we set the devices up. Uh, we can also do what's called our white glove service, which is actually where we we wait for the profiles and services applications to be deployed directly to the device before they get shipped to save the end user the time of doing that. So if you'd like us to do that, then we can do that. Um, device gets shipped to site. Um, and then at the end of the life, we've got the deprovisioning as well, where we can manage the joiners, movers and leavers process for you. We can take devices back in. We can clean them, reprovision them and either store them and, uh, for the next person um, or destroy them if they're end of life. OK, um, at that point I'm going to hand over to Hannah who can really bring some of these services to life. Perfect thanks Darren. No so yeah for this slide I'm going to focus on the ongoing support and management elements of the BMW service. So we focus on the actual management side first. The BMW service includes the actual patching, upgrades, deployment of the operating system and the application and also and more importantly ensures that the actual security policies which we've agreed with you are all applied. The device support side of things that relates to the end user incidents and tickets. So this can range from the dreaded blue screen of death, permission changes, help users gain access to applications such as Teams or OneDrive, or even the age old classic of helping users with password resets. So not all customers might require the full first or third line managed service. The BMW service is charged on a per user per month uh, model and depending on the level of support required, the pricing will be tiered. So some customers might not actually require a full managed service as there's already an existing IT team in house, for instance. So the second and third line option might actually be more appropriate. 
This can help because it helps internal teams by providing additional resources when resourcing can be tight. But also, as we all know, please, Robert, close your ears. Uh, Microsoft technologies are forever evolving and the way that it kind of changes and works is ever changing. Therefore, for busy teams who don't quite have a sole dedicated focus on the Microsoft estate, the BMW service can be used to leverage subject matter experts on these technologies. However, kind of on the other side of the coin, if a customer perhaps has a small IT team and would rather have them focusing on the business critical industry specific applications, then perhaps a fully outsourced first or third line service would suit much better. So that gives an overview on the actual kind of management and support side of the BMW service. I did want to take a quick look at the licensing criteria. So Robert, um, in his presentation, Eamon and his did mention some of the licensing, but if we're looking for um, what actually is suitable for the service. Well, those that are on Microsoft Business Premium, those that are on Microsoft 365 E3, and those that are on the Microsoft 365 E5. Essentially, the higher the SKU you're on, the more we can roll out to your devices. So if we're considering though the minimum licensing requirement, that includes the three on screen, which is Windows 10 Pro, Azure Active Directory P1 and Intune. Your account manager at Bytes, they can work with you to make sure you have the most cost efficient way to license your workforce. But I'm not going to take too much uh, detail on this slide today, but I did want to give a high level snapshot of what you can expect if you were to proceed with the service. So there are a couple of workshops available. I'm going to go into them, go into them in a bit more detail later on the presentation, which is where the journey tends to start. But assuming you've decided to proceed with the service, we take customers through quite a well planned and structured delivery approach. So this consists of any discovery of the existing estate, defining the requirements for your desired future estate. So although we have a standard bill which is ready to be deployed to users, we appreciate and using some of our smart packages that Eamon mentioned kind of in his presentation, we appreciate that um, a design phase might be needed to help with anything that's unique to your organisation. And with a service so integral to that like BMW, we do recommend going through a pilot phase of which the KPIs, the users who will be involved and the duration of the pilot are all agreed with yourself. Once the pilot's complete, then we're all happy and ready to go. This does then continue into the BAU of the BMW service. So we've talked a lot about today on kind of what's including the technology, uh, how the BMW service, service works, the key components of that, how the journey looks like. I think one area that's kind of left discussed is why customers actually choose to proceed with this service. Well, BMW is designed to kind of solve five key business problems. Firstly, to improve user satisfaction. So this service does include regular surveying and comparison to MPS scores. Users are happier when the devices and the support they're receiving are much more efficient. So Rob actually showed during his presentation some really great stats on how end users and IT teams could both benefit from a service like BMW. And I liked what Robert said, we're making IT team the actual heroes of the day. So never happens, so it's always a great chance to take. Uh, but this also nicely links to where BMW focuses on the productivity of a user. Workforces with higher quality devices and a better service are just more productive as applications load faster, what can be achieved in a day is increased. Again, both beneficial for both the user, but also the management team within the organisations. And of course, has been touched on already, but a service like BMW, it wouldn't be able to function without ensuring that the security team's requirements are met. So the devices are built to the standard of NCSC guidelines, and we also take into consideration any ISO 2071 or cyber essential requirements that you might need within your organisation. Management is a slightly different one, but interesting one. I mean, the management, the overhead of having so many different technologies within your estate and having a wide range of hardware can be super tricky. So BMW is designed to simplify the environment for both the BMW support team, but actually also the IT, internal IT team as well. So as we mentioned, Microsoft tooling is ever evolving. It can be difficult to remain upskilled on the improvement and changes. So a service like this, just make sure you have access to people who do have a sole focus on the Microsoft estate. And your IT team can do the fun stuff. They can innovate the estate. They can look at your line of business applications. Mon device management is actually deemed relatively mundane. Therefore, let your team focus on the fun part of technology. Lastly, and a big hit for CFOs and the IT directors, BMW has a predictable billing model. It is a per user per month charge, and you're able to forecast your IT spend over the year. The service is charged monthly, which allows users to be removed and join the platform on a monthly basis, which means that if staff leave, your cost of IT goes down, so you don't actually have to worry about paying for more than you're actually consuming, which is great. 
I would also like to delve into some of the further benefits of the service. So the BMW service is designed to be flexible. Uh, what do I mean by this? Well, a customer now has choices, whether it's the device that you're going to use, whether you're going to pick the level of support most appropriate for your organization, what MDM tool you're going to use, so whether this would be Endpoint Manager, Endpoint Configuration Manager, or actually a co-management environment. For, and again, scalability and forecast spending, I know we've already spoken about that, but I really want to touch upon it. Since some injuries, industries, the employee count really does scale up and down for a number of different reasons. And therefore, having to commit to a, a large number over an unknown period of time can be quite unscary and not necessarily the best for your organisation. So I really do want to highlight of how this billing model is so effective. It really provides such an easy way for IT managers and the directors to be able to forecast to their management team on what their IT spend will be for the year. It is such a headache, uh, and I'm sure a lot of you encounter this when you're trying to actually get budgets sorted for next year. Finally, on the kind of benefit side of things, I'd like to discuss the benefit of having a unified supplier. So some of the call of the you on the call today might already be kind of a Bytes customer. You might actually be new to Bytes, but having a multi-vendor environment can cause so many problems who actually owns the overall responsibility when things go wrong. Bytes have the ability to help you with your licensing, with Microsoft services, with non-Microsoft services, but most importantly, with BMW, they're able to look after the core of your business, which is the user's device. So running kind of near to the end uh, of the presentation today, I did mention in the uh, kind of customer journey slide I showed earlier that we do have a couple of workshops which are available. So first of all, there is a possibility that your organisation may be eligible for a free of charge Microsoft funded workshop. There are a number of workshops in this funding group um, which you might be eligible for, but most importantly for today's session, including the Endpoint Manager workshop. If you're interested in finding out, please do contact your account manager with your tenant ID and they can check out for you. I really highly recommend taking it. Again, Robert, close your ears. Let's take the, the funding from Microsoft where we can. And it's such a good way to look at how the technology works, how it works in your organisation, running a very small POC, just to prove the technology, see if it's right for you. If unfortunately um, your organisation isn't eligible for the Microsoft workshop, we of course have another option to proceed with, which we call our BMW EUD workshop. So this workshop is slightly more tailored and it does cover the key components delving further into the technologies themselves, reviewing your current endpoint estate and also having a look at your application estate because this could be a, such a huge sticking point for customers. Um, again, if you're interested, your account manager will be more than happy to set up a call, discuss agendas, structure and pricing for these workshops. But yeah, that is all of it from me today. It's back to you, Darren. Great stuff. Many thanks, Hannah, for that. Um, so we've got a few minutes uh, left. And thanks, thanks, Robert and Eamon, for your contributions as well. Does anybody have, have any questions? Um, if, if, if you have, either use the chat or uh, turn your microphones on uh, or your videos. Um, if you've got any specific questions, whilst we have Robert here with us, and Eamon. Okay, um, so if there's nothing, if there's no more questions, so say thanks for your attendance. Um, this has been recorded, like I said, and, and you will be sent a link. So if you do want to share with your colleagues, then please feel free. But just we use this time to, um, oh yes, there's a poll, sorry. <laughs> almost forgot. If you would like a conversation with one of our specialists around anything that you've heard today, then please do uh, complete the poll here and one of us will be in touch with the relevant information that you that you need. Um, but yeah, please do share the link around with your colleagues and uh, and get in touch if you have any further questions or, or requirements. But Robert, Eamon, Hannah, thank you very much for your help. Catherine, thanks for organising the event and thanks everyone for taking the time to attend this webinar this morning. We hope to see you again soon.